Boys and girls, I want to say good to see you this afternoon. It is September. We are back to school, most of us. And I want to say it's so great to be back to Sunday School Live, boys and girls. I want to thank everyone for coming back after the summer break. I don't know what you've been up to, but it's been an interesting summer. But now it's time to get on and to crack on. It is back to Sunday School Live, boys and girls. And I want to say good afternoon to Johan and good afternoon to Annabelle. Thank you very much and everybody else that is tuning in this afternoon. We are going to have some fun together, boys and girls. We've got a new series of truth. We have got a new uh, series of stories. We've got a new memory verse. Boys and girls, are you ready? We need to get going. We need to get started. We need to get up on our feet and we need to sing. We haven't sung necessarily for a long time, but now it is time, boys and girls. I want to hear you from the rooftops. I want to hear you loud. I want to hear you clear because I want you to stand up. Come on, get on your feet, Annabelle, and we are going to sing. We are going to sing the fast paced one. It's about counting backwards. Are you ready? Let's go. Somewhere in the Jesus will come again, although we don't The countdown's getting lower every day Nine, eight, and seven, six, and five, and four Call upon the Savior while you may Three and two, coming through the clouds and bright array The countdown's getting lower every day Boys and girls, that is a very fast-paced song. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again. Do you know that he promised that? And do you know what, boys and girls? When God promises something, guess what? He does it. That's right. Boys and girls, what have we got in store for us today? We are going to have fun. But do you know what? Before we have fun, we need to ask God for his help. Do you know how we do that? We do that as we pray. We do one, we do two, and we close our eyes when we speak to God. Boys and girls, are you ready to pray? Let's go. Our God and Father, we thank you that we can come today to Sunday School Life. We can come and learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. We can come and listen to the songs that tell us about him. We can learn a verse that tells us about who he is. And our God and Father, we just give you thanks that we can learn not just about who he is, but what he has done for us. How that he paid the price of our sins on the cross at Calvary. And our Father, we thank you that you've kept us safe and you've blessed us. And we pray above all that you'd bless every boy and every girl, every mum and every dad, every person watching this afternoon. And later on that you'd bless them in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls. Thank you very much for coming along this afternoon. It's so good that you've made it out today. Well, not you've made it out. You've made it in or you've taken the time out of your busy day to come and join us at Sunday School Live. Do you know what, boys and girls? We are going to learn about, guess what we're going to learn about in our next series of Bible Truth. We are going to learn about transport in the bible boys and girls isn't that so cool do you know what there is lots of different types and modes of transport in the bible and over the next eight weeks that's it four plus four is eight over the next eight weeks we are going to learn about transport in the bible boys and girls and do you know what there's lots of types and there's lots of lessons as well to learn about transport in our Bibles. Do you know what? People traveled in many ways, but slightly different ways than how we travel today. We don't read of cars in the Bible. We don't read of electric scooters. We don't read of Uber in the Bible. There's no oyster cards. There's no aeroplanes. But we do read of lots of ways that people 
got around in the Bible. Let me see if you can think of some. But let me tell you, we are going to start today. Are you ready, boys and girls? We are going to learn about a boat. A boat. What do you think we can learn about this boat that tells us about God, that tells us about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us, boys and girls? Do you know what? Boats, Noah used a boat. He built a pretty big one. Jesus used a boat. Lots of people in the Bible used a boat. Paul used a boat. But boys and girls, you know, a boat generally in those days was made out of this. It was made out of wood. Now, what else? Where can you find wood in the Bible? Do you know what? It reminded me, boys and girls, of the most important time in our Bibles that we read about wood. Do you know what? You've seen the picture before if you watched Sunday School Live before, or if this is your first time, thank you very much for coming. Do you know what? It reminds me of the cross on which the Lord Jesus Christ died. He died upon a cross of wood. Boys and girls, we can learn from a boat. Do you know what? A boat has these things. We call them oars. Boys and girls, it's important that they have oars because it has to go in the right direction. It has to be steered in the right place. Boys and girls, do you know what? Who can take us in the right direction in our lives? There's only one person that can take us in the right direction in our lives. And he, boys and girls, you know who he is. He is God. Do you know what, boys and girls? Boats sometimes have problems. Do you know what causes those problems, boys and girls? Sometimes if they get very big ones, it can cause very big problems. Boys and girls, waves can cause problems to a boat. Boys and girls, do you know what? They can bash up against the boat. Sometimes they even bring the water inside the boat. And do you know what? That reminds us when times get difficult and times get tough. Do you know what? We can trust in God. Because you know what, boys and girls? It really reminds me of when the disciples were in a boat and there was a storm on the lake and they, they, were, ups, they were worried. And do you know who they went to? They went to Jesus. Boys and girls, if you have a problem, you can go to Jesus and he can help you with your problems. Boys and girls, do you know what else it reminds me of? Now, this is a funny one because it's spelled really strange. Do you know what? It reminds me of a boy. Do you know what? when we need a boy? We need a boy when we get into tr we need to boy when we get into trouble to help us keep safe. And do you know what? Do you know what that reminds me of? That we have all sinned. We have well, the Bible tells us the verse says we have all come short of the glory of God. Boys and girls, do you know what that really means? That we've done something that's wrong. And do you know what? God is right and he knows what is wrong. So we've done something against him. Do you know what? Sometimes you might use a boat because you're hungry. Huh? You might use a boat because you're hungry. Yes, boys and girls, because you want to go fishing. Do you know what? A boat reminds me of fish. Do you know what? The Bible, in the Bible, the disciples used a small boat often. I said that. And they went out fishing. And just this reminds us of what the Lord Jesus wanted the disciples to do. He says, I want to make you fishers of men. Oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it, boys and girls? Do you know what he was trying to say? Do you know what Jesus was telling his disciples? He was telling them that they want he wanted them to tell others about him. He wanted Christians. He wanted people to tell everybody about Jesus. And do you know what, boys and girls? That's exactly why we have Sunday School Live. Because we want to tell you about Jesus. Not, we don't want to tell you about ourselves. We want to tell you about the one who died upon the cross. The one, the Lord Jesus Christ, the saviour of the world. Boys and girls, we can learn lots from transport in the Bible. And do you know what? We're going to do that over the next eight weeks. Because we're going to run Sunday School Live till at least October half term. So we've got eight weeks, including this one, to learn about the Lord Jesus Christ and transport in 
the Bible. Time to sing. You have listened very, very well, and I know that. So, boys and girls, it is time to sing. Are you ready to see what we have in store? I want you to stand up now. I want you to get those arms moving. I want you to get active, and I want to hear your voices loud and clear. Are you ready, boys and girls? This is all about Mr. Noah. Boys and girls, Sophie and Esme, it is so good to have you with us this afternoon. I want to thank you much for being very patient over the whole of August and waiting for Sunday School Live to come back again. I know it was a difficult month, but thank you for sticking with us. Boys and girls, I want to say thank you very much. You're all singing very, very well. If you're on Facebook, drop your name in the comments box below and you might just get a shout out. If it's your birthday today, we might even sing happy birthday to you later. I know it's someone's birthday today, not mine, but my friend. Guess what the name of my friend is? If you know who my friend is in the Bible, you know who my friend is in Chile. It's his birthday today. How exciting. Boys and girls. That's enough excitement for now, because we are going to learn a verse from the Bible. That is exciting, though, isn't it, boys and girls, to learn what God has written down for us. Did you ever think that? When you read the Bible, God has taken out his pen and he's written directly for you and for me. So when you read your Bible, when someone reads the Bible to you, it's God speaking to you. Boys and girls, this is the verse that we are going to learn today. It's about what Jesus said. The, the whole of the Bible is God speaking to us from the beginning to the end. Who remembers what the first book in the Bible is? The book of Genesis. And the last one is the book of Revelation. Boys and girls, from the very start to the very end, it is God speaking to us. But this is a particular thing that the Lord Jesus Christ said when he was on earth. Boys and girls, shall we say it together? Are you ready? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse 2. Boys and girls, that's what Jesus said. But what does Jesus really trying to say? Boys and girls, Jesus said, yeah. Come on, you, we're, come, we're going back to school now, aren't we, boys and girls? Um, and there's lots of people giving us lots of different instructions, different things to do, different things to say. But who do we listen to? Yes, we have to listen to our teachers. We listen to the people that our mums and our dads and those grown-ups that we live with. And, and they will tell us certain things that we have to do. But boys and girls, who is it really, really important to listen to. We need to listen to what God has to say to us. Boys and girls, there was another word in that verse and it said this, truth. Do you know what? Why? You say, why do I have to listen to my teachers? I know sometimes it can get a little bit stressful and a little bit annoying, but that's what we're supposed to do. But you know what? Why do we have to listen to Jesus? Because he, what he says to us is true. Do you know what? Sometimes you might listen to someone and they might make a little mistake in what they tell you. Or you might be playing Chinese whispers and you don't quite hear what they say and pass it on. Not quite correctly. And it's funny at the end of the line, isn't it? How it comes out so different to what was actually started at the beginning. But let me tell you this, boys and girls. 
when God says something, when Jesus tells us something, it is 100%. It is completely true. We can trust and we can depend on it. Boys and girls, you might have seen this word in our verse, man. Do you know what? That any man, that every man, do you know what? That's not just talking about men. It's not talking about boys. It means every human being. It means every baby, every boy, every girl, every mum, every dad, every aunt, every uncle, every granddad, every grandma, everybody, everyone is included. Do you know who that includes, boys and girls? That includes you. And you, and you, and you, and it even includes me. Boys and girls, that's what that verse is telling us. Do you know what? I've got a little exercise for us to do together. I need your help. I cannot do this by myself. I'm a little bit rusty after having August off Sunday School Live. So I need your assistance. Are you ready, boys and girls? I think I need you standing up. So I think get off your chair, get off the, if you're sitting on the floor, stand up and we are going to say the verse together. So, well, do you know what? We're going to do something different today. We are going to, when it goes like this with an outline, we are going to, we're going to whisper it. We're going to whisper. And then when it goes bold, we're going to shout it. Okay. Okay, have you got it? Brilliant. And do you know what? We are going to make a slight correction as we go. Do you know what I was saying about making mistakes? Teachers always make mistakes. And I've made a mistake today. We're going to say not verse two, but verse six. Are you ready? Whispering. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse two. If you checked your volume just then, your computer or your TV or your phone or your tablet, it was not. It was me whispering. It was whispering. Don't worry, because we are going to say it next. Are we going to say it again, boys and girls? Are you ready? Do you remember? Correct the verse as we go. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse 6. I didn't hear you, Johan. I didn't hear you, Esme. I didn't hear you, Annabelle. That was not loud enough. Boys and girls, we are going to say it again. We're going to whisper it now. Are you ready? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse 6. Are you ready? Boys and girls, that was done very, very well. One more time, and this is going to be loud. Are you ready? Glasses are falling off. I'm cleaning my ears out so I can hear you. Are you ready? We've got this. We're doing it together in time. Don't miss the beat. Are we ready? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse Six boys and girls, you did very well. We're going to say it through sensibly now. We're not going to whisper it so those with their hearing aids turn them up. We're not going to shout it so 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 it blows people's eardrums. We are going to just say it normally, like normal people. If there's any normal people here, let's say it normally. Are you ready? Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man who comes to the Father." But by me, John chapter 14, verse six. You did very, very well. It's time now you're still standing. I'm sure you are. It's time to sing. Let's stay on our feet. This is all about a man who wanted to see Jesus. We call him Nick, not Nicodemus. Let's sing this loud and clear. Let's go.
There was a very important decision, wasn't there? Nicodemus, he wanted to trust in Jesus. Oh, I don't know, there's someone watching that might know the answer to this. Marcus, how do we get our sins forgiven? Nicodemus wanted to have his sins forgiven. How can we have our sins forgiven? It's important, isn't it, that we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to say well done to Thelma. Great singing. I'm sure you were singing loud and clear. Boys and girls, you know what? That's the song done. Do you know what we've got time for now? We've got time for our story. Do you know what? Let me tell you, in our next eight weeks, we are going to have eight stories about holidays. No, we're not. We are going to have eight stories about journeys. And today we are going to meet this man here. Do you know what? Let me introduce you to this man. This man had two names. that We're going to call him by his longer name because I think you might know him by his longer name a little bit more than his shorter name. Do you know what? Some of you have long names and then some of you have short names. But this man had both. He had two in one. How cool was that? Do you know what his name is? His name is Abraham. And he had a wife. Do you know what his wife's name was? Not Sarah, but Sarai. Do you know what? They lived in a city, a place. Uh, 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 um, I don't know where it was. Uh, actually, I've remembered. Do you know where he lived? He lived in a place called Ur. Not Ur or Ur, but Ur. He lived in a place called Ur. And do you know what? That was in a place. You might know where that was, actually. If you get out your map and you find a country, you may have heard of this country called Iraq. And it was in that country as it is today. But the place was called Ur. Uh. And you know what God said to him? God said, you have to leave. You have to leave the city and travel on a long journey. And you're going to live in a new place. You're going to live in a new place. And the place that is called is Canaan. And you know what, boys and girls? God promised Abraham that he would bless him and make him the father of a great nation. And these, those who blessed his family would be blessed by God. And those who cursed his family would be cursed by God. And Abraham, do you know what he did? The best thing to do when God asks you to do something is what, boys and girls? It is to obey and you know, he set off with his wife, Sarai, and his father, Tira, and his nephew, Lot. And they set off on the journey. And you know what, boys and girls? They got to a place called Haran. And they stopped there to settle down. And during this time, do you know what? Abraham's father, Tira, died. And you know what? I better be careful what I say now, aren't I? Because my friend Marcus is listening. But you know what? He was 75 years old. Who thinks you can get to 75 years old? Is that really, really old? He was 75, boys and girls. I don't know how you, old you are, and I know how old I am, but 75 seems a long, long, long way to go. And you know what? Abraham there, he was 75 years old. And God told him to continue on the journey to Canaan. And Abraham, do you know what he did? He did what God told him to do. He obeyed and he traveled south into the land of the Canaanites. And they came to a place, the next place on the map. You can see it there, boys and girls. They came to this town called Shechem. And there was a great tree there and they settled down. And do you know what God said to Abraham? He said, I will give you this land. The land that you can see from the top of the mountain where you're standing. I'm going to give you this land to your family, to your offspring, to all your children, your children's children. And the land will be yours. Do you know what, boys and girls, Abraham 
He was very thankful. And you know what we do when God does something for us? We say thank you to him. And you know, Abraham said thank you to God. He built an altar. And he sacrificed. He made a sacrifice. He gave something that meant a lot to him. And he said, I don't need this. I'm going to give it to God. And you know what? He built the altar and he made a sacrifice and he worshipped God. And Abraham, then he moved a bit further south um, to this place called Bethel. And you know, what? once he arrived there, God blessed him again. So what did he do? Do you know what, boys and girls? You can't give thanks to God too much because he has done so much. He's done amazing things. If you've asked him to be your saviour, if Jesus is your Lord, you can thank him every day for what he has done. And if you haven't put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's important that you do so because God has done great things for you. He has made it possible for you to have your sins forgiven. Do you know what, boys and girls? They were there and there was a famine in the land and some people were very, very hungry. And do you know what Abraham did? He decided we need to move on. We need to leave Shechem and we need to go to a place called you can see it there, boys and girls, Egypt. You might have learned about Egypt at school. And they went all the way south to Egypt. Food. And as they entered Egypt, they were talking amongst themselves. And do you know what? Abraham got a bit worried. He said to, he was looking at his wife, Sarah. She was a very beautiful lady. And he feared that Pharaoh might, Abraham feared that Pharaoh might take Sarah, his wife, from him. He might kill him and take his wife. That's not very nice, is it, boys and girls? So Abraham said, I've got a plan. I know what we're going to do. This is going to be fine. So do you know what Abraham said? He said to Sarai, do you know what? When we go into Egypt, you're going to pretend that you're not my wife, but my sister. And then you'll be safe. All will be fine. And do you know what? They got there. And Pharaoh's officials said, they said to Pharaoh, do you see that guy, Abraham? He's just come into our country. You see him kind of over there. Do you know what? His sister is a um, very a good lady. And um, I think she'll be good to help you out. And do you know what? He gave Abraham some cattle and some donkeys and some servants. And, and Sarai moved into Pharaoh's palace. Boys and girls, however, God inflicted Pharaoh with and his house with lots of bad diseases. And Pharaoh found out that Sarai was already married to that man that he saw the other day, the Abraham guy, Abraham. And you know what? Uh, he said, get Abraham, come and tell him to come and see me. And he said to him, why didn't you tell me that this lady was your wife? He exclaimed, take her and, and go out of my country. And Pharaoh gave orders to his officials to send Abraham, Sarai, and everyone that was with him out of Egypt, along with all of their possessions. And they took off and they went back to Canaan with the cattle and the servants and the gifts and the things that Pharaoh had given to Abraham. And they arrived back the same route at Bethel. And they settled down and they lived there. And Abraham prayed to God and thanked God for keeping them safe. Boys and girls, Abraham now settled in the land of Canaan. The journey was coming to an end and the land that God promised to him and to his family. Do you know what? They had no children. They were older in life and they had no children yet. But God had promised that they would have a family. And boys and girls, you can read about this in your Bible. If you turn to the first book in your Bible and Genesis and you'll be able to see what happens after the journey was finished. Boys and girls, there's one picture for me to show you. You've seen this picture before. This is the cross on which the Lord Jesus Christ died. We've already spoken about the cross today, and we were reminded about the cross when we were thinking about the boat, weren't we, boys and girls? Do you know what? When Jesus died upon the cross, he paid the punishment for, for my sins and for your sins. Do you know why you say, Jesus, why did you do all why did you go through the pain? Why did you go through the suffering? And you know, if you ask Jesus that, he will tell you, I did it for you. Yeah, I did it for you. I did it so that you could have your sins 
forgiven and that I can be your saviour. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to you this afternoon, boys and girls, mums and dads, and anyone who's listening. Because do you know what? This message is not just for boys and just for girls. It's not just for mums. It's not just for dads. It's not just for aunts or for uncles, for granddads or for grandmas. It's for everybody. That if you put your faith and trust in him, he can, he can, no, he will. He will guarantee that you have your sins forgiven. Boys and girls, you have listened very, very well. It's time to sing. It's time to stand up again. I hope you were sitting down for the story. Uh, I didn't remind you about that, did I? But I'm sure you were. It's time to sing our, I think, last song today. Boys and girls, this is about a man who wanted to see Jesus. He was a small man called Zach. was a very little man, and a very little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Saviour he wanted to see. And when the Saviour passed that way, he looked into the tree. And so now, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm coming to your house for tea. Zacchaeus was a very little man, and a very little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Saviour he wanted to see. And when the Saviour passed that way, he looked into the tree and said, Now, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm coming to your house for tea. I'm coming to your house for tea. Boys and girls, you have been singing very, very well. I want to say, Jimmy, you need to practice. Jimmy, singing very, very well, but you need to practice. Thank you very much for coming today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining us. Do you know what? It's important that we thank God. Do you know, Abraham thanked God when he got to the new places that he lived in, didn't he? So shall we thank God for his help just this afternoon? Shall we pray? One, two, three. Our God and Father, we thank you for blessing Abraham. We thank you for blessing us today. We thank you for the verses that we've learned, the stories that we've learned about Abraham and his journey. We learned about the boat and how it reminds us of the, the wood, reminds us of the cross on which Jesus died. And our Father, we thank you that the Lord Jesus was there. We thank you that he paid the price for the sins that we have all committed. And we thank you that if we trust in you, that we can have our sins forgiven. Bless the boys and the girls and everyone that's been listening this afternoon, we pray. And later on in your son's precious and lovely name, Amen. Boys and girls, I want to thank you very much for coming today. There's no quizzes today because we're just starting a new term. So come back for prizes next week. Boys and girls, it wouldn't be possible without all the amazing resources that are available to us. So I want to remind you, do you remember, if you want to do the quiz, we have the question time and we have the Sunday School Live studio so i want you in the comments box below is a link to the online quiz if you can go online and and fill that in and then we'll see who gets the most points next week and also the sunday school live studio if you would like to send us an audio recording a recording of you saying the memory verse then we might show that show how can we show audio we might display no we can't display it we might have it however we have it, next week. Do you know what? If you are on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you will see all the videos that we upload. If you are on Facebook, like our Facebook page and then you can see all the stuff that we are doing at the Mitcham Junction Gospel. I want to thank you very much for joining us again for one more Sunday School Live. We've got seven to go until half term. Boys and girls, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun packed. We're going to learn lots.